I make work about people. I'm a figurative artist, but the intention behind a lot of that is conversation. I'm really interested in everyday people uh, that often wouldn't be seen as grand or special enough to have a portrait done of them and having a conversation with them. I think part of that is this unshakable belief that I have that everybody has intrinsic value and that there's something that I can learn from all the people that I can interact with. My name is Louise Mandumba, and I am a 2022 artist resident at the Sam and Adele Golden Foundation for the Arts. So one of the things I was interested in was thinking of a painting in two pieces with a context and a focus. I work in a way that's a little bit more tight and detail-oriented, but I'm interested in, in introducing opacity as abstraction in the work. So still having all of that detail that's really important to me, but changing the context of how it's being viewed or adding context thereafter. And so this is similarly a color pouring medium and pastel ground pour that has a little window in it. And the intention would be in a final work to be able to focus on a specific part of a composition. So this would probably be how I'd crop it. I really like focusing in on just the features of the face, but you could shift it. And if I had multiple figures in a single composition, I'd be able to focus in on where those figures intersect or interact, whether that is a gaze or them actually touching and focusing on that specific interaction because empathy and connection is a big part of how I think about my work and how I process as I make the work. Note-taking is something that's important to me in how I process through works or think through problems and it's something that I want to include in the final work so that someone looking at the work maybe understands more of the context of the thought that is happening around it. I think the whole week was a series of aha moments in the first week um, because I'd, I'd make notes and I'd be really excited and come back and think I could pivot what I wanted to do and then the very next day was presented with new information that like recontextualized how I could pivot. It has been a lot of learning and I think that's changed my expectations and goals quite a bit because I thought it would be more production heavy. I've also gotten to speak with some of the other residents in this space and they have helped me understand that there's some grace that needs to be extended because there is so much learning that is happening in this space. Being an artist is something that I realized was a, an option for me pretty young. My father is an art educator, an artist himself, and I had a, a range of really supportive people around me growing up. This particular avenue allows me to tell stories and I think stories have been important to me because I come from a part of the world that doesn't always have very accurate stories, if any story is told at all. I think the way we understand places we've never been to is through the stories that are told to us about those spaces. I've been inspired by pattern ever since I was little. I don't know where it comes from, other than the fact that I grew up very rural on a farm and our mother made most of our clothes and it was the 60s and 70s, so we were always in patterns. For a long time, I was a figurative painter and patterns were in the backgrounds or borders. And then when my work became all pattern based, I haven't looked back. My name is Kat Crotchet and I'm a 2022 artist resident at the Sam and Adele Golden Foundation for the Arts. With this residency, I really gave myself the space and opportunity to investigate different things. And I really feel like this residency lends itself much more to that because you're encountering the range of how painting products can be used. And you have access to the materials and you have access to technical experts. So it really facilitates a higher degree of experimentation. So one of the first things I learned when I came to Golden was um, that you could layer material and carve into it because my work deals a lot with pattern and color. So color is really important to me. So I decided to layer the paint in color layers I would use in my regular work and then start carving into it with tools. So I've got red on top, underneath that is violet, and then I've got a yellow green. Now you can start to see some of the violet showing up. And one of the things I like about this process is that I don't know what I'm going to get, so there's an element of chance in it. So even though generally my work looks like there's quite a bit of control, there are all of these places where I leave things up to chance. 
When I make a painting in encaustic and I don't like it, what you do is you take a torch and you heat up the surface and you scrape the painting off with a razor blade. And as I do that, I turn the painting into these wax balls so I can draw with them on the surface of my substrates. So they still have a purpose, they have a history, and I try to ball them so the colors are kind of random. So as I draw with them, I roll them on the surface and I don't know what I'm gonna get. I would say the thing that keeps drawing me back to the studio is it's how I see the world. I see the world through the lens in my studio. So I've come to realize that's pattern. One reason I started putting a diagonal line in my work was during the summer of 2020 when the Black Lives Matter protests were going on. So I really found that my pattern had a more significant change symbolically at that point. They really became metaphors for people existing in the same space, but having very different interpretations of events, of history, identity. This really started showing up as a dividing line, and this is why the pattern is the same pattern but in different colors and it's also why it crosses over that line. So there's some ambiguity in what's going on and I found that the pattern and the line are still relevant to my own perceptions today. I make shaped paintings, different kinds of geometric and organic shapes. I work on foam which is covered in layers of aqua resin and fiberglass and it gives me a very light substrate and a kind of nubbly, bumpy texture. It isn't like canvas, but it provides some of the interruptions that canvas can provide. And on that, I work with a variety of water-based media. The work is abstract and, I hope, kind of serious and kind of fun at the same time. My name is Mark Joshua Epstein, and I'm a 2022 artist resident at the Sam and Adele Golden Foundation for the Arts. The shapes in these panels come from this magazine, which is called Nest. It's like an interior magazine and an art magazine with like a very like cheeky, kind of sexy, slightly queer sensibility. And when I was growing up in the suburbs of DC, I was not very normal, I was not very suburban. And so finding this magazine was really important to me. And what was cool about it is they, they're often cut in these amazing shapes and that necessitates these borders inside. Because I identify as queer, I wanted a way of shifting the narrative a little bit and making something that felt a little bit off or a little bit odd and that it wouldn't necessarily be readable to everybody. There's a kind of language in there and an exuberance for color and pattern and shape, playing by the rules but not playing by the rules at the same time. And I think that hopefully comes through these paintings. Ideas for stencils come from all over the place. So I think a lot about architecture and design, furniture design, surface design. My grandfather was a furniture dealer. So we used to hang out in his furniture store on Long Island. And it was that time in like the 80s where everything was just like a little bit rounded. So a lot of the shapes come from there. This is a book of, um, like traditional Jewish paper cuts, mostly 19th century from Eastern Europe. And I grew up pretty observant Jewish, but I always shied away from using any kind of Jewish imagery in my work. And it wasn't until I started like thinking about these that I realized that there's a real wealth of just like beautiful patterning in these paper cuts. Having this opportunity to go virtually across the street um, many days a week to have these two-hour workshops with people who are complete experts and in the best way, complete nerds about this stuff in a way that I think when you're a painter in your studio, you maybe don't know that other people are nerding out to that level. Having access to that knowledge and then being able to run upstairs, grab the materials and put that knowledge into action immediately it will take me a long time to absorb what has taken place at this residency.